Um, so, um, hello. Um, <coughs> I'm um, going to talk about uh, PyPy. Um, so, first, a um, few words about me. Um, <coughs> so, um, I, uh, I've been a part of the PyPy project for uh, about uh, four years. Um, and uh, uh, at the moment, my job is uh, to work on uh, PyPy. Um, so I'm a freelancer and I, I work from home in, uh, in Bristol, uh, in England. Um, <coughs> and, um, well, today um, I want to uh, give you uh, a tour of PyPy. Um, and so, um, to, uh, I want to explain um, um, what, uh, what PyPy does, uh, what it's for, um, um, uh, give you um, uh, some idea of its uh, history, uh, and um, uh, most importantly, uh, give you uh, some pointers as to how you can uh, use it and uh, run your Python code faster with, uh, with PyPy. So, um, what's PyPy? Um, our uh, definition uh, that's on our website, um, we say PyPy is a fast compliant alternative implementation of the Python language. But um, we like um, another quote uh, better, it's one by uh, Guido van Rossum, uh, who you may know is the uh, founder of the Python language. And uh, he said, if you want your code magically to run faster, you should probably just use PyPy. And um, that's, um, well, that's basically our mission statement, uh, to magically run your code faster. Um, and... Um, uh, in this talk, the, uh, I won't say uh, exactly uh, how much faster because uh, there's no good answer to, uh, to that. Um, we have benchmark uh, suit that says that we're about uh, seven times faster than C Python, but uh, well, benchmarks lie, and uh, um, and um, they don't matter for uh, what you're doing. What matters is the speed you get on your own code. Um, but um, what you can uh, expect um, is, um, I guess, somewhere in the region of 20% uh, uh, faster to maybe twice faster. That's uh, the returns we got uh, from uh, people who uh, switched to, to PyPy. Uh, on real applications doing uh, <coughs> real things like serving uh, web pages or network stuff or I don't know, uh, a bit everything. Um, <coughs> so, um, yeah, um, the only way to know um, how well PyPy will work for you will be to try. Um, but, um <coughs> I um, would like to um, give you an idea of uh, how it works first. Um, and um, to do that, uh, I will first remind you of how um, CPython works. So, um, well, as a user, you usually don't care about uh, what's inside uh, this box. Uh, you just have your Python code and uh, you call Python on it and it runs and does uh, whatever you want. Uh, um, but, uh, well, sometimes you know that you have to uh, be uh, aware of what goes on inside and um, therefore you probably know that uh, CPython uh, takes your uh, Python code um, compiles it to a bytecode, and um, then you have a um, virtual machine that um, is basically just a big uh, switch statement in C inside a loop 
that takes each bytecode and uh, runs different uh, um, things uh, depending on this instruction. Um, <coughs> And um, this uh, CPython interpreter, um, uh, it is uh, written in C, um, which means that to produce the uh, interpreter, um, Python uh, core devs just write uh, C code, and uh, then there's the C compiler that uh, takes the C code and uh, creates the interpreter. Um, well, uh, PyPy is uh, much the same. Um, we uh, also uh, run the Python code, uh, doing uh, whatever you want, and hopefully uh, the same thing as uh, CPython does. Um, we also um, turn uh, your code, uh, for your Python code, into bytecode. Um, and uh, we also have um, an interpreter loop that takes each bytecode and uh, um, does some operation. Uh, but um, what we have uh, in addition to that, and uh, that's what uh, makes PyPy fast, is um, the um, just-in-time compiler, um, which um, is uh, something that just uh, looks at what code um, gets executed, and um, um, and when it sees that some uh, some loop or some function is executed often, uh, it um, um, goes into a special uh, interpretation mode, uh, which is called uh, tracing, where it records uh, every. Uh, low-level operation that is done while executing the bytecode. So it records things at a lower level than the bytecode. And using um, that information, it can um, compile this uh, series of uh, operations um, down to uh, machine code. And um, that machine code will be uh, very efficient because um, by tracing, you know that, for instance, you uh, have a function that takes two integers and uh, adds them. Um, then uh, in the compiled code, um, you just, uh, you first um, check that you have uh, integers, and, but then it's just a single uh, instruction <coughs> to add them. <coughs> and um, for instance, if you have, if you add, uh, I don't know, two lists of integers, uh, you only need to do the check once, and uh, you uh, only do uh, basically one uh, machine instruction for uh, uh, per addition, um, which uh, basically removes uh, all of the uh, interpreter overhead and uh, allows you to have um, uh, bits of, of code. Uh, that you write in Python, but run uh, basically as fast as uh, if you'd written uh, it in C, uh, or whatever language, whatever compiled language you like. Um, <coughs> and um, um, now for uh, the uh, uh, two chain part. Um, this uh, interpreter um, is um, created um, by something co we call the R Python toolchain, which is uh, basically a compiler for uh, a language uh, we invented, which is a subset of uh, Python. Uh, so this language is called R Python. Um, and um, the uh, advantage of having uh, this tool chain instead of uh, using something like C uh, is that, um, well, first, uh, it looks like Python, so it's much nicer than C. Um, second, um, we can analyze uh, the um, R Python code, and that uh, allows us to, uh, to automatically generate the um, 
um, the JIT compiler uh, using just um, uh, the uh, uh, the code for the uh, interpreter part. So we only uh, we only write an interpreter and so only this part here uh, and this part is uh, generated uh, automatically. Um, <coughs> so, uh, a bit of history now. Um, the um, PyPy project uh, has existed for uh, a long time. Um, the um, first start was uh, in 2002 uh, when um, uh, Armin Rigo was um, uh, developing uh, something uh, called uh, Psycho, which was um, a handwritten uh, C uh, just in time uh, compiler or optimizer for Python. And, um, and uh, it's something that's quite complicated to write, uh, even for uh, Armin. Um, and therefore, he thought it would be much easier if he uh, could uh, use, uh, have an implementation of Python in Python and generate um, the optimizations starting from that. And um, this idea uh, resonated with um, other people. And uh, 2003, the uh, project was uh, officially founded. Uh, the name was uh, uh, the um, working name was initially minimal Python, but uh, quickly um, the name uh, PyPy uh, uh, took over, and PyPy uh, initially meant Python in Python. Um, <coughs> after that, uh, the uh, uh, there were um, a lot of uh, developments. Um, there was, uh, uh, in particular, uh, starting from 2004 to 2007, um, there was a big um, uh, EU um, project um, from the um, something something uh, research framework. Uh, sorry, I can't remember. Um, which uh, allowed um, several uh, people to work uh, full time on. Uh, uh, on PyPy, so um, at this stage, uh, it must be said that uh, PyPy had uh, no practical uh, application. It was just um, an interpreter uh, uh, written in Python. Um, but uh, well, uh, this uh, 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 generated a, a lot of ideas, uh, much of which have been abandoned since. Uh, but still, uh, this created the, the basis for uh, uh, PyPy. So uh, that's how we got the um, uh, implementation of the interpreter and uh, the uh, R Python tool chain. Um, after that, um, the point when um, PyPy um, really uh, started being useful uh, is when the uh, JIT was uh, invented. Um, so it was in 2009, uh, more than six years after the start of the project. Um, but um, quickly after that, uh, performance uh, improved uh, considerably. Uh, the first release that was faster than uh, CPython was in uh, uh, 2010. Um, then, uh, yeah, there was uh, uh, support for 2.7 in 2011. Uh, work was uh, started on supporting Python 3 uh, already in 2011. So uh, we've started a, a long time back. Um, and, um, well, this uh, gets, it, uh, uh, gets us to um, Today, what the, um, the project is um, still uh, very active. Uh, there are maybe uh, a dozen uh, regular contributors. Um, 
we um, uh, we have uh, at the moment um, uh, funding from uh, the uh, Mozilla Open Source uh, Support uh, Program, uh, which allows uh, four of us four of us to work basically full time on uh, Python three support. Um, and uh, we uh, we release um, uh, PyPy quite uh, often, uh, like every two to three months. Um, so the last uh, PyPy two release was uh, last month, and uh, the last PyPy three release was um, this week uh, on Wednesday. Um, <coughs> so. Um, Let's get to um, what you uh, you can do with uh, PyPy. Um, and um, well, first um, I want to say uh, that um, uh, well, before using PyPy, there is a question of uh, why would you want to use PyPy? Um, so the uh, general reason is uh, uh, is speed. Uh, you uh, want uh, to use PyPy when you have some uh, Python code that uh, uh, doesn't run as fast as you would like, um, and uh, and that's a good reason to uh, s um, start uh, trying uh, PyPy. But um, I would like to suggest uh, to do something a bit different because uh, there are cases where you want your code to run faster. There are basically no cases where you want your code to run slower. So uh, why don't you just uh, start using PyPy all the time and uh, only drop down to see Python when, uh, well, when, when you see that you have a problem with PyPy, that maybe some library is missing. Um, so, just a suggestion. Um, but anyway, um, once you've decided to uh, use PyPy, the first thing to do is to uh, install it, obviously. Um, so, um, there are uh, the uh, obvious options, uh, either uh, our official binaries or uh, from your uh, package manager. Um, and, uh, yeah, um, <coughs> On uh, Ubuntu, um, you uh, should use uh, this uh, PPA because um, the version that's in the uh, official Ubuntu repositories is uh, usually quite old, uh, unlike the uh, PPA, which uh, mirrors uh, Debian testing and gives you the uh, latest version uh, all the time. Um, there are uh, a few other options um, to get uh, PyPy. There's this uh, portable PyPy, which uh, is a um, relocatable um, install uh, that's completely self-sufficient and that uh, works on most uh, Linux distributions. Um, otherwise, there is uh, PyEnv, uh, which um, actually I don't use it myself, but it seems to be um, uh, quite convenient uh, for um, um, Travis uh, CI. Lots of people uh, use it in, uh, in their um, uh, Travis configuration, to, uh, and it um, down uh, it allows you to uh, automatically download uh, and install uh, the PyPy version you want instead of being uh, restricted to whatever Travis decided to install. Um, so. Um, now that you've uh, installed PyPy, first thing you, sh you should do is uh, to use uh, virtualenv in order not to get confused between the system Python, which will be CPython, uh, and uh, PyPy. Um, and um, then uh, you're ready to, um, um, to try PyPy, uh, see if it works with uh, the uh, code you're interested in. Um, and on um, on real uh, projects, not just toy uh, things, uh, the first thing you'll probably notice is some uh, test failures somewhere 
because of uh, the difference uh, in uh, garbage collection. So that's uh, probably the main uh, semantic difference uh, um, between uh, CPython and PyPy. Um <coughs> PyPy, um, CPython uses um, reference counting, um, whereas uh, PyPy uh, is uh, garbage collected. Um, so the um, difference um, for you, for you as a Python user, is that um, in CPython objects are um, destroyed. Um, uh, in a deterministic uh, manner, uh, as soon as the ref count goes to zero, uh, the object is deleted, uh, which um, typically means that uh, if you create a lo uh, local object uh, inside a function um, and uh, don't return it, the object uh, on CPython gets deleted as soon as you exit the function. But on PyPy, um, we have uh, garbage collection, which means that we, um, uh, it's good for, uh, garbage collection is good for, for performance because we don't have to uh, manipulate this reference uh, count uh, all the time. Um, but, um, uh, but uh, it makes the behavior a bit uh, different uh, from CPython. Uh, objects are deleted later. They uh, only get deleted once uh, the um, PyPy runtime decides to run a garbage collection. Um, and uh, what will usually happen is that uh, you will have code that uh, implicitly relies on uh, CPython deleting uh, a file or a socket uh, at, um, at some specific point. Um, but PyPy does it later, and uh, then you uh, run your code with PyPy, and uh, you see that you run out of uh, file descriptors. So to avoid that, uh, uh, you need, uh, well, you should use uh, with blocks. Uh, instead of uh, saying just open file, you say with uh, open file as f. Um, and uh, since uh, the last uh, PyPy2 release, we have um, uh, this uh, option. Um, so you um, can use it with uh, PyPy minus X uh, track resources. And it's uh, basically a backport of the uh, resource warnings uh, that uh, are in uh, Python 3. So that will tell you if you have uh, forgotten to uh, uh, to close a file or um, something similar. Um, okay, so um, now um, once you've um, dealt with that, um, you are probably ready to um, run your code with PyPy, but in order to get the best, the best performance f uh, from PyPy, um, you uh, should probably uh, modify your code a bit. You don't have to, but you will get better per performance if you do. Um, and um, the reason is that the um, performance profile of PyPy is um, uh, not the same as uh, CPython's. Um, <coughs> so uh, in PyPy, uh, the function calls are basically free because uh, they will uh, be uh, removed by the JIT compiler. Uh, the JIT compiler, when it sees a loop, it inlines all the uh, function calls you have inside. Um, so, um, and also, um, objects uh, in PyPy are uh, rather efficient. Uh, we have uh, something similar to the slots the optimization of CPython, if you know what that is, uh, but for every object, basically. Um, and um, yeah, so these two things together, uh, they also mean that you can um, write your code uh, in a cleaner manner uh, when you target PyPy performance. 
because you don't have to play tricks uh, like you do uh, on C Python to get uh, the best performance. You don't need to uh, inline functions just to avoid this the overhead of a of a function call. Uh, you um, you don't need to uh, use uh, little uh, to pass around little tuples or uh, dicts. Um, you're um, well. You're actually better off uh, using um, real objects, just a simple object with just uh, uh, two or three uh, attributes. Uh, it will be um, it will be uh, more performant than dicts, and it will be cleaner. Um, and uh, yeah, the other uh, important um, optimization we have uh, is uh, this thing called uh, list uh, strategies, uh, which uh, means that um, when you have um, a homogeneous list, um, like a list that contains only uh, floats or uh, only ints, uh, then um, the um, uh, the contents of the list are uh, stored as uh, machine uh, floats or ints. So just uh, eight bytes uh, per float, and um, we just uh, have a special uh, a specialized implementation of lists uh, for list of float that uh, where we record at the level of the list that it contains only floats. Um, so that um, improves uh, performance. It, uh, um, it also um, reduces the uh, memory usage compared to, um, to CPython. Um, <coughs> and um, on this uh, topic, uh, the, um, with these uh, optimizations, uh, it means that um, dicts uh, tend to be slow compared to the rest because they're not uh, really optimized compared to uh, what CPython does because it's already uh, quite efficient in, uh, in CPython. Um, and... Um, uh, and um, the fact that uh, dict are so efficient on CPython uh, means that we tend to use them uh, all the time. Um, but um, for PyPy, it's uh, it's a bad it's a bad idea. Uh, just well, use dicts when uh, they're needed, but uh, not all the time. Um, so. Um, after uh, the uh, optimizations, um, let's talk about uh, seeing what uh, the result is uh, of these uh, optimizations. So um, that's um, benchmarking. And um, I guess the first rule of uh, benchmarking uh, is that uh, you, uh, you need to benchmark. You can't just, uh, if you talk about performance, you need to, to measure it. Uh, uh, you should uh, never say, uh, this will be faster if you haven't measured it. Um, and uh, the first thing people uh, try to use for benchmarking is uh, the tests, uh, usually. Uh, and um, that's not a good idea. Uh, on um, it's uh, with tests, you try to uh, exercise uh, all the code paths uh, in your uh, project, um, and uh, well, that's pretty much the worst possible case for uh, just-in-time compilation. Uh, the JIT worked on the principle that uh, even when you have uh, a lot of code. Uh, you spend most uh, of your uh, time uh, inside uh, just a small portion of that code, but with your test it's not the case. Um, <coughs> and um, if you want to, uh, 
to use a tool, uh, please don't use uh, time it. This, um, this um, warning, time it is a very unreliable tool. Use perf or something else for real measurements. Uh, this is what uh, PyPy will tell you uh, in the next version if you try to use time it. Um, so um, please use uh, perf, um, which, is, uh, which was developed by uh, Victor Stiner. Uh, or uh, just do simple uh, time dot time and print uh, at several points and print the difference. It's better than using time it. Um, and uh, just a few words about uh, profiling. Um, um, the uh, usual profilers don't work very well with uh, PyPy, so. Um, members of the team have developed uh, something called uh, VMProf, which is a statistical profiler. So um, unlike uh, CProfile, um, it, um, it doesn't uh, add uh, code to observe uh, every function call uh, and uh, record the time, every t uh, the time it takes uh, at every call. Um, this, um, statisti this statistical profiler uh, just samples um, your program while it's running. So it just sends uh, signals to start the program, watch where, uh, where in your code uh, it is, and uh, it records that. So it means that you can uh, have a very low overhead because you can choose the sampling rate. Uh, and for uh, PyPy, it's basically the only way to have a fair, a fair sampling of, um, uh, of what your code does. Um, there's also a, a tool called, uh, called GViewer, um, which is being uh, uh, merged inside VMProf, um, but it's not uh, finished yet, so um, it allows you to um, see uh, the um, what we call the JIT traces, uh, which means the um, assembly code that is emitted by the JIT compiler. So um, it's um, very useful when you want to go uh, deep into uh, optimization. Um, <coughs> So um, that's it for the uh, on the subject of uh, pure Python code. Um, but um, of course, uh, Python um, is um, useful because uh, it has uh, C extensions. It has uh, lots of uh, very uh, useful libraries. Uh, that are not that are written in C or use uh, C at some point, uh, and um, there uh, has long been the um, 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 saying or an idea in the Python community that uh, if you want, uh, you can always make your code run faster by writing C extensions. So um, they are a bit everywhere in uh, in the Python ecosystem. Um, so, um, and, um, so what uh, does PyPy do uh, in that domain? Um, well, the first thing uh, PyPy does is that uh, since it runs um, Python code faster, and um, in particular very uh, the simpler the code, the faster uh, uh, PyPy can make it. Um, so uh, it means that uh, with PyPy, you don't need uh, to write C for performance. Um, but um, um, the well, you don't uh, always. Uh, get to choose whether uh, to use uh, C or not, because there are um, uh, lots of libraries that are written in C or uh, have a C API. Um, so um, for that case, you can't stay in pure Python, and the 
uh, PyPy team's answer to that is that uh, you can use uh, CFFI, um, which is, uh, well, it was developed um, by uh, Amin Igo mostly. Um, <coughs> and it's a convenient way to, um, uh, to interface with uh, C code. Um, it's uh, quite minimal. Um, so uh, on PyPy, it's bundled and uh, you have good performance uh, on C Python. Uh, uh, you need to install it, uh, but um, um, performance is fine. Uh, it's um, and uh, it's very uh, convenient generally to um <coughs> to wrap C code because you. Uh, it's lightweight. You uh, only need to um, uh, to, uh, to use uh, C uh, function definitions, um, and um, you can use um, you and you uh, interact with this using a simple um, Python. Uh, Object you don't have a complicated a API to know, or you don't have to learn a, a new language. So um, a lot of people are, are using it now just because it's convenient, uh, and uh, it's uh, definitely uh, more convenient than C types, in my opinion. Um, <coughs> so um, I'll just show you a little example. Um, Typically, what you do with CFFI is that you uh, have uh, a first um, um, module that you run at installation time, um, in which you just give the uh, signature of the functions, uh, of the C functions you want to wrap, uh, and then and you say where to find uh, the headers for uh, the C code, and uh, CFFI will, uh, from this, create um, a small uh, C extension that is a very uh, transparent wrapper of uh, the C library. <coughs> and then, at runtime, uh, what you usually do is that you take this thin wrapper and you uh, add um, a layer around it. To, um, that's written in pure Python uh, to uh, give a, a good um, Pythonic API. Um, so um, that's it for uh, CFFI, but um, there are uh, cases where you can't use CFFI. Uh, it's when you want to use uh, NumPy or Pillow or LXML, uh, well, uh, there are many um, uh, of the libraries that uh, use the um, uh, C API of Python uh, and um, are written in uh, in C, uh, and uh, it. Uh, it would be absurd to rewrite them using uh, CFFI or uh, or Joe Python. Um, so um, for that case, we have uh, something we call uh, CPYX, um, <coughs> which is uh, well an emulation layer for um, the uh, C Python C API. Um <coughs> the um, uh, the idea is that you. Uh, Create. Um, you can create object in your uh, in the C code, um, and then uh, when um, um, when these objects in interact with uh, the core uh, uh, PyPy interpreter, uh, you uh, have uh, proxies. Um, so you create an object on the C side. You get. There is a proxy that gets created on the uh, PyPy side that uh, uh, that you can use uh, in a regular uh, Python code, um, but uh, whose uh, changes are mirrored uh, back to the uh, C side. So uh, you can um, you can interact with uh, object both 
uh, via the C API and via um, Python code. Um, <coughs> there were, uh, well, there still are difficulties uh, with uh, this approach. Um, major one being that um, um, that uh, well, uh, ref counting uh, is uh, everywhere in uh, C Python. Um, so uh, we've recently uh, um, um, well, I'm being told that uh, I need to finish. Um, so. Um, I'll just skip uh, to the end. Um, we um, in PyPy um, are, um, uh, are running a Python code faster than CPython. And uh, our uh, objective in the future is to uh, allow you to uh, run uh, all the Python code, uh, including the C extensions uh, and uh, including um, the latest uh, advances in uh, Python 3. Um, so um, that's it. Thank you. I'm not sure we have time for, for questions. Okay. <coughs> um, what? <laughs> <coughs> on est désolé, on n'a pas de temps pour les questions parce qu'on a commencé un petit peu en retard.